What is up my cutouts? Cardboard Ninja here and today I'm bringing you a beginner's guide to Crossout. What is Crossout? Crossout is a free-to-play, crafty, drivey, shooty game where you design and create your own killamajig with weapons, etc. and pit it against other players, crafty, drivey, shooty killamajigs in the effort to get more resources so that you can do it again bigger, better, faster. One. This video is intended for those new players or returning players out there who haven't gotten very far in the game and are looking for a quick tutorial that can get them started on the path to success. I may or may not have spent some time in this game, so we'll see if I have any useful information from the time I've spent in the wasteland that I can pass on to you. If you're new to Crossout or a returning player, and you want to know the most important things to consider when you're spending your time in game, so we're going to go over three things. One, character advancement, or unlocking potential. Two, earning resources, slash winning matches. And three, making coins and getting items. Character advancement in Crossout is defined by your faction reputation. There's one basic faction that every player is a part of by default, the engineers. And you can think of this as your player level. Also, at the start of the game, you'll have access to three sub-factions, which we'll call the basic sub-factions. Lunatics nomads, and scavengers. Character advancement in Crossout is defined by your faction reputation. Leveling up your faction or sub-faction is done with a resource called reputation. Think of this as experience that you get after any match, mission, or game mode that you play and is applied simultaneously to your engineer faction and your selected sub-faction. Gaining ranks and reputation unlock passive benefits such as additional parts from both engineers and your selected sub-faction, as well as increasing the part limit of your builds as your engineer faction ranks up at certain points. The times in which you get more parts on your vehicle is at level 1, level 3, level 5, level 7, level 10, level 13, 16, 19, 22, and finally 25 when your vehicle parts limit reaches the maximum at 80. With all that said, you might be wondering, which faction is for me? And I don't blame you for falling into that trap. I'm not going to beat around the bush. The correct starting faction is the Lunatic. Other than the Engineers, the Lunatic faction is the only faction in the game that gives access to additional frame parts. And the parts lunatics get are lightweight frame parts, which are found in nearly every build. So try to level them up first. One final note on faction reputation. Much like the rested experience mechanic from World of Warcraft, Crossout has an energy boost that increases the amount of reputation you earn per battle. You can see the bonus you are receiving by hovering over the battle button for any mission, brawl, or raid where it would apply. So now that you know how to get greater potential, you want to know how to realize it. And you do that by crafting parts from resources you earn in combat. In Crossout, there are a ridiculous number of resources. So, off the top of my head, there are 14 resources. Scrap, Copper, Coins, Fuel, Engineer badges, wires, plastic, batteries, electronics, engraved casings, coupons, event currency, uranium, not shown, and cross crowns, also not shown. For the purposes of this guide, we are only going to focus on scrap, copper, coins, fuel, and engineer badges. Fuel can also be found on the main screen, sitting above the battle icon. Scrap is earned by selecting and playing in the Get the Scrap Metal or Patrol missions found here. This is for if you wish to fight other players, PvP, or against bots, PvE. Copper is earned in PvE missions only, such as Back on Patrol, which costs 5 fuel, which we'll go over later. Easy Raids and one of the available hard raids. The amount of resources you earn is based on your performance in that mission. Together, scrap and copper are the two most common resources in the game and are used for nearly every single crafting recipe. 
found epic, legendary, and of course, all the way down, even common. As for fuel, which is found here, players are given an amount of fuel each day based on their engineer level. Beginning players will be given 60. Once your engineer faction reaches 5, that will be increased to 100. And finally, when you reach 10, it will reach its maximum of 200. As noted in the rewards screen for the engineer faction. The fuel that is given each day refreshes at, well, daily, uh, and must be used or you lose it. However, you can earn additional fuel that you can add into your storage by simply adding a fuel tank to your build, winning a mission, and surviving. An important note about this, however, and many people do make this mistake, do not enter a raid with fuel tanks on your build. You will not gain additional fuel, and those fuel barrels do explode if they're shot. To see where you earn the other resources, you can see which activity will grant you which resource under the Select Mode screen, and just mousing over the activities on the map. For example, this will give plastic, this will give event currency, and this one will give batteries, and also coupons. So if you want to craft anything that isn't common in this game, you're going to need coins. The topic of coins and cross out is worthy of its own video, but for now, we'll just go over the basics of selling resources so that you can get enough to craft your very first rare part. Sell an item to the market. You can either find it from the market tab at the top, or you can go to your storage tab, find the item that you're looking for, right click, and click trade in parameters. Do not select buy or sell from this sub menu. This is a somewhat of a trap. This means that you would lose the most amount of money or gain the least amount of money for your resource. To trade in parameters, find out what it's currently being bought or sold for, in this case, 656, and sell it for one coin less. When you hit sell, it will put that up on the market as a option for people to purchase. And when it is actually successfully sold, you'll receive a notification. Okay, so now that you know how to get resources and sell resources so that you can get coins, you're ready to craft. Go ahead and go to whichever faction whose rare menu you wish to craft from, and you'll have the coins necessary, provided that you have sold enough resources. In the beginning of the game, you're going to need to either sell your scrap, your copper, or your fuel that you earn to get the coins necessary to craft. Get the components necessary to craft said item that you want, and then select craft. It will take 15 minutes. Then you're ready to play. All right, my cutouts. So you've watched the guide so far and you haven't learned anything necessarily new. You're a returning player and you've seen this before, or you're a new player and you may have seen this in a tutorial or in another video. Well, I'm gonna teach you about the most important thing a new player or a player aspiring to actually achieve anything in this game needs to know. And that is about the challenge system. The challenge system is activated by this small exclamation point in the upper right hand corner. Now this is going to look very daunting because of the fact that there is a significant sum of challenges available to the players in this game. There's challenges that are daily, they are found at the top, weekly, seasonal dailies, seasonal weeklies, and of course there are other challenges that can appear from time to time. Of all of the available challenges, the most important ones are actually not the daily ones. They get you rewards, they get you scrap, they do. And they're actually remarkably easy to achieve. All you need to do is, well, play the video game. Win some raids, play some battles. In this instance, use a shotgun. This will cycle between shotguns, cannons, and machine guns. Having one of each is not difficult to achieve. Buying things in the market, and of course, completing challenges. So completing the dailies, that's not gonna be a big issue. The real meat and potatoes of the game comes down from your weekly challenge. Weekly challenges earn you engineer badges. Engineer badges are another currency that were mentioned earlier, but I didn't talk about until right now. Engineer badges earn you the ability to purchase epic parts, skipping special and rare. Now you can't purchase the part directly, but once you get 3000 of these engineer badges, click badge exchange. Again, this can be found by hitting the exclamation part point, pressing view, and then going to badge exchange. 
These badges can be exchanged for a myriad of resources, such as scrap, copper, wires, plastic, electronics, etc. You don't want to do any of that. That's a trap. There are several traps in this game. What you want to go down to and purchase is the Pathfinder's Container, which costs 3,000 badges. I'm going to buy one right now. Once you purchase this, this is going to be found in your storage, underneath your resources. Pathfinder's container can contain a random epic part from a list. That list is found underneath the badge exchange Pathfinder's container possible contents. So, what we're going to do now, just for you, is open this crate and see what we got. In this instance, I got a fat man. It's a cannon. I don't necessarily need a fat man, but what we're going to do is take it. And if you are a brand new character, you can, well, you should always take this item, to be honest. But you can, if you do not like the item, spend 1,000 scrap to have another grab at the bag. You almost should never do this as a new player, because the amount that you're going to get might not be offset by the cost of that scrap. I cannot understate how important completing these weekly challenges are, and they are more difficult than your standard daily challenges. Uh, two of which involve doing hard raids, which at the very beginning of the game you won't be able to do. One, because it will be very difficult, and two, your vehicle most likely won't qualify to actually, achieve, uh, to actually go to them. Weekly uh, hard raids require a power score of 8,000. So, until your vehicle actually reaches 8,000 power score, you won't be able to complete that part of the weekly missions. Additionally, it might be difficult to do fights against Leviathans. But, just keep at it, do the ones that you can, and earn up those points to exchange for uh, Pathfinders. So at this point you may be wondering, okay, well, now that I know how to... Well, buy and sell and craft and all that good stuff. The question might be, well, what weapon is right for me? There are a plethora of weapons in this game. Over 100 weapons are found within the game of Crossout. And of course, there's machine guns, cannons themselves, rockets, grenade launchers, energy weapons, crossbows, melee weapons, flame weapons, mine layers, and so on and so forth. And uncategorized for those off-the-wall wonky weapons. But which one's for me? Well, which one's for you? Well... I'm just going to not beat around the bush with this either. The correct answer is shotgun. By far and away, the shotgun class has the most good weapons in it. And you can take the, the, mighty, the mighty Lupara very far in this game if you have to. You can earn a significant sum of resources and there are a significant sum of builds available to new players that can leverage even the cheapest weapons at even the highest of power scores. Well, not the highest, but the much higher than you'd expect. Well, I guess that's more or less about it. In summary, if you're a new player to cross out, what you should take away from this video is you need to do your weekly challenges, buy low and sell high on the market, typically use shotguns in combat, or at least until you become familiar with other weapon types, make sure that you have a fuel barrel or two on your build, and consider creating a dedicated raid build that doesn't have fuel barrels on it to do those pesky raids to get those additional resources that you need, you know, for the wasteland. That more or less sums up my guide. I hope that it was helpful for some. And if anyone has any ideas, questions, comments, leave them in the comments below. Let me know what you think new players should know. If I get enough likes in this video, uh, we'll say, I don't know, 50. Maybe I'll do a dedicated build guide for beginning players so that they can understand advanced tips and tricks to make sure that their car doesn't just explode randomly due to all the fuel that I've told them to put onto their vehicle. All right, this has been Cardboard Ninja. Peace.